There okay, we go. there we go. So, um, as you guys can see up here, um, hopefully you came to the right session. This is titled To Infinity and Beyond for All with 3D Modeling. And my name is Letitia King. Um, and I teach at Arlington Middle School in Arlington, Tennessee. This is my 13th year teaching. I teach um, eighth grade physical science honors and STEM one, um, both high school, uh, two of the five high school courses that we offer for our eighth graders. Um, and um, I love all things STEM, of course, uh, that it does include science and math. Um, I am a mother of one 15-year-old son, bless me, um, <laughs> um, and I am married um, to another educator, um, Dr. Marlon King, um, so we do all things education in our house 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Um, and so, I have Shelby Buxton. Hi, my name is Shelby Buxton. Um, I also teach at Arlington Middle School right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. I do sixth grade STEM. Um, I love my job. This is only my second year doing teaching, um, but I do love it. Um, I have a golden retriever at home. His name is Moose. He is my kid. He's my baby. Um, I have pictures of him that my kids like know our classes by because it's just the dog. So, um, but hopefully you guys um, will enjoy what we're talking about today. If you guys have any questions, just let us know. Okay. All right. So um, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to describe a little bit of what 3D printing is. Um, not everyone knows what it is or what all in, it entails. So we're going to try to describe that for you. Getting started and what it looks like in, either, in the, both of our classrooms. Um, the CAD program that we use, which is Tinkercad. Any tips and tricks that we thought would be beneficial for you guys. And then um, our school has some certifications um, and partnerships and clubs that we do. Um, and then at the end, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. So we do have this on Slido if you guys would like to join the cl uh, the code is up there and everyone should have their phones with them some sort of technology we can't really walk out of our house without it. So if you guys want to join it it's 2825272 All right, I'm going to go ahead in 3 seconds. 3 2 one. All right, so uh, I want you guys to answer this question. How do you feel about your ability to implement 3D modeling, not necessarily printing, but any sort of 3D modeling in your classroom, in your district? What do you think about it? They should be able to. Yes, you should be able to answer. Can you pull up? I think she has the hit the display in slide, Slido. Were you able to? All right, well, we're just gonna go on um, because technology is a beast. Um, does anyone have anything they wanna say? How do they feel about 3D modeling? I know we're all tired. There we okay, go. Okay, hold on. Here Come we in. go, Letitia's coming. I just got my very first 3D printer, Yay. so I'm very, very excited, and I printed a flamingo because that is my spirit animal. Um, that was the first thing that I did, so I really came to this session because I have no idea what I'm doing other than I made a, a flamingo. That's all I know. So I have several 3D printers, um, but I'm just trying to find a way to more incorporate it more in my STEM class, um, and I will say I 3D printed the first thing was the Death Star because I'm a Star Wars nerd, so you got to do something like that. <laughs> um, we do 3D modeling in the classroom, but not with the 3D printer. So we use a lot of clay and, you know, craft supplies. But I still look at that as 3D modeling. Yeah. Oh, I love all the hands. Yay. I work in a higher ed at an outreach center. And so we have a lot of kids coming and visiting. And we have several 3D printers on hand. Um, the big problem that I find a lot of times is that we only have short blocks of time just with those kids. And so how can I incorporate that 3D modeling into a lesson where we can really give them that experience in 45 minutes or that's an right. hour? Good. That's great, because that's how much time I have to. <laughs> we started out the same way. We started out making out fun things, and then we've gradually have moved to using the 3D printer to print parts 
of things that they're going to need because we went to a career fair and we saw that construction uh, and contractors and mechanical uh, people that are in CTE careers use 3D printers to make parts instead of trying to find it at Lowe's or waiting for it to be ordered. So that's what we're trying to instill in our kids that you don't have the part, you make the part, you design it. And it's really turned into a great, great uh, problem solving strategy. Yes, awesome. And that has to go back to uh, career building too and going back to those. Um, I want to learn more about it. We've done some modeling with Clay and done some Tinkercad work with my kids in a STEM club, but I need help with Tinkercad too because I don't know how to get the kids to save on Tinkercad. There's just things that you don't always have time to figure out um, before you're using it. And uh, so I, I want to learn more about it. Hopefully we'll be able to help you out with that today. Awesome. Thank you guys for your input. All right. So um, 3D printing, it is basically um, just creating a physical object layer by layer from a digital um, design. Um, so we typically use these in my class. We actually use them for our projects. Um, sometimes we use them for prototypes. Um, like what they do in the real world often. Um, and my favorite part about this is that you can press go and walk away, you know, because our classrooms are always doing something, especially in those same classrooms, it never stops. So it's really convenient to be able to just press it and walk away. Um, so we're gonna talk each about how our classrooms are set up and what we have to get started. Um, so this is how my classroom is set up. I have mobile 3D printers. They are set up on rolling carts. Um, I have them plugged up to outlets, and these are the two that I have in the middle of my classroom. There's a desk between them to keep our laptops on, and the laptops are not supposed to move off of there. Um, the kids can use their iPads for Tinkercad, and then we can go to the laptop, log into my Tinkercad, and I have access to all of them. Um, so, like I said, the laptops, and the laptops can be connected to the 3D printer themselves, um, but we also have SD cards for the other two that are not pictured, because sometimes those cords get in the way, and in my classroom, it is always chaos. There's always some kid who is moving around doing something, so um, it's very beneficial not to always have cords in the way. We had the filaments on the top, um, those two little spiral rolls, and then inside of the rolling cabinets, um, there's a little key that I have that I keep my tools for. Um, I kind of have like this clipper type thing um, that we use in case we ever need to break off a piece. It's a little bit easier to cut the filament. Um, I do have an X-Acto knife in there. Um, so just a couple of tools that I don't always want the kids to mess with. I do encourage all of them to try to go to Tinkercad on here and start it themselves um, because we do want them to be independent. Um, but these are the Creel Creality? Creality and their pros are the ones that I keep in my classroom. All right, so um, this is my classroom, and we have two types of 3D printers. Um, I have, um, right now, I have one Dremel with another one on the way. Woo -woo. And um, this year, so prior to the MakerBot, those are two MakerBot classroom sketches. Um, that I have. Um, prior to the MakerBot classroom sketches, um, I had some larger uh, MakerBot replicator plus. And you guys, they, they died. They were old, they were eight to 10 years old. The um, extruder wouldn't hold its temperature um, and they don't service those any longer. So I'm just waiting for them to be removed from my classroom. Um, but since I did not get new ones, um, our PTSA, which is really wonderful, offered $4,000 to teachers this year, and my silly self, silly me, um, thought, oh, wow, they're gonna offer each teacher an opportunity to get $4,000. No, that was $4,000 for every teacher in the building. But I wrote a grant for all $4,000, and lo and behold, I got half of it. So um, what was purchased with that uh, $2,000 was the two uh, MakerBot classroom sketches, and I also was able to get um, certifications for myself and all, um, I have 
33 students in my STEM 1 class. So my students went through MakerBot certification as well as myself, which we'll talk more about um, later on in the presentation. Uh, mine are not mobile. You'll notice also in the corner over there, I do have two laptops. Um, they're not in the front because I teach two subjects. I teach physical science honors and um, STEM 1. And so my countertops are shared by both classes. And with us being a STEAM um, designated school, I also do projects in my physical science classes. I teach two STEM and two physical science classes. So there's like tons of moving parts and projects going on at all times in my class. Um, I am getting two more um, MakerBots. Um, so depending on how many students you have, I will tell you, you do need like a, a row of MakerBots. So, um, and they're already ordered this year. So I encourage you to look for those grants and ask, you never know what you might get. So we'll have six 3D printers come this fall um, in my classroom on one side of my class and the other side, this is a biology lab, by the way, an old biology lab. And um, so they have sinks in the countertop. Well, this year I requested, and my request was granted once again, they're covered and all the water is turned off on all the countertops. So now that increases our countertop space. And on the other side of my classroom are maker spaces. So I'll have seven maker spaces, and then I'll have um, six um, 3D printers on the other side of the classroom. Um, I also have um, teaching toolkits. So um, printed so kids can understand um, when they go into the settings, what they need to expect when it comes like for infill and shells. So kind of they'll have like examples of what that looks like when they change the settings. Um, you'll notice it's located near electrical outlets. Oops. Electrical outlets near the top. Um, filament storage is really, really important, you guys. Um, something that we did not do when we first started 3D printing years ago. Um, so I put that request in and it was granted. I just saw I got my box of, um, uh, Silica, yes, I got two boxes of silica. So you'll need two, bo you'll need, uh, two um, boxes of silica and you'll need like the plastic storage bins that like snap close and then you'll put your, um, you, once you unwrap your filament, which she showed you guys earlier, my filament is actually on the side of my MakerBots. Um, hers was on the top. You, when you finish using your 3D printers, you're no longer using them, you need to store your filament inside of a closed um, a storage bin, covered in silica, it needs to be buried, and then I'm gonna take duct tape, and I'm gonna duct tape the actual um, opening of those bins to store it over the summer, because if you don't, um, the moisture will get inside, and then when it starts printing, it'll start breaking, and so you have to throw the entire roll away. And I know um, a filament runs about thirty to forty dollars a roll, and you'll be throwing away thirty to forty dollars at a time of filament. Um, you do want designated student laptops, like she has, like I have. Um, one thing that is, um, like she said. Um, I did purchase um, flash drives this year, which I had not, and I purchased a classroom set of flash drives. I keep the flash drives um, with me. They're in a storage case. In the front of the MakerBots, as well as in the front of the um, Dremels, there's a place to put flash drives um, for them to transfer their designs. Um, and I do have a toolkit that I purchased from Amazon. And like she's, uh, the toolkit, it's not specific to any one brand. The toolkit will run you, um, I just purchased that this year as well. Um, it will run you about $21, um, but it has the spatula in it, it has a box cutter in it, has everything that you think you, but I, like she said, store it away from your students. So my toolkit stays in my teacher desk. It is not stored near where students can get them. They have to come and request the tools from the toolkit from me. Um, I think that's it. We can go to the next slide. So I just showed you guys uh, teaching toolkits. Um, you'll see over here to the right, if you go with um, MakerBot and you do the certification, um, the teacher has an additional, there's four modules that students go through. The teacher will go through four modules. And then there's an additional module that you'll go through as a teacher. Um, and it's on writing curriculum. In that module for the teacher, it does Excuse me, require that you create the teaching um, toolkit pieces. 
Um, and so this shows if you change the settings from low to high to standard, what that print will look like. And this shows if you change your sh um, number of shells and if you change your um, infill. Um, one funny thing happened with a student, um, which I'm, we're going to show with you guys also some projects um, that we brought with you, some student projects. Um, my students make this game board, and it had a student that was trying to create, uh, print a, a die, and we were trying to speed up the process. So changing the sh number of shells in the infield changes the speed at which the uh, objects will print. And we were like, okay, how can we speed this up? And we decided to decrease the infill. Well, we decreased it way too much, and their die had like holes in it like Swiss cheese. So that was a, a fail. So it's a lot of trial and error. Just know you are going to waste some, some filament. Um, so you do need to put that in your budget that you're going to need to repurchase filament. All right. All right, Tinkercad. So um, prior to students, if you want them to be um, able to design, I do suggest that you um, use Tinkercad. This is my class, as you can see over here on the left. It shows my class is set up in Tinkercad, and these are the steps. So you'll need to log into Tinkercad. And the first is to set up an account. And then in step two, you'll need to create a new class. As you can see, um, I also um, am one of the advisors for our uh, school STEM club. And so my STEM club also uses um, a 3D printing this year in Tinkercad. So as you can see in my, my teacher Tinkercad account, you'll notice I have a STEM club, I have STEM one, and I have my STEM two first and second period. So they each have their own class. Um, next, you will add students. Now you can batch add the students if you have it in a file, which most of us, we've been on platforms, we've seen it um, do that, or you can manually add each student. Um, that then you will print your student login um, information. Um, and so you can print like cards and give directly to the students and it has all their login information so they can log in. And when they start des um, designing, so you can actually see their designs. When they start designing, their design is actually in your class. So if they're not submitting it into a activity that you've created, it just goes in the general design. So across the dashboard, it's gonna have designs, it's gonna have activities, and it's gonna have lessons on the dashboard for each individual class. So if, there, if you don't create an activity, and that's new in Tinkercad this year, that was something new Tinkercad added. If you don't create an activity for them to submit in that location, when they make a design, it is literally just like a ton of designs under design, and you have, and they have to go in and you have to find like individual names. So what my students do, since they don't have um, individual at our school, um, we don't allow our students to create accounts um, for privacy reasons, and that's why we have to create classes. So what I have to do is, on those two laptops you guys saw earlier, um, I have to log into those laptops and then I log into my class and then they click on, the students know to click on, I have a step sheet, and they know to click on their class and find their design. And then they download the STL file to the flash drive and then they print. So um, there's some control there. Um, and then some options, like I said, you can um, create activities now, which is new. You can add co-teachers, so some of you may be in a co-teaching class. Um, or maybe it's not a co-teaching. Um, our STEM clubs, um, pretty much all of our clubs in our school have a co-advisor. So say, for instance, that uh, the main advisor is not there, well, then the, the other advisor has access to the Tinkercad account as well. Um, and then there's student-paced lessons and tutorials. Um, and so um, before students start printing on 3D printers, they have to know how to design correctly, how to group correctly, because when, if they don't, when they go to stick that design into the 3D printer, it is not going to print. And I always have students when they print and they'll say, something's wrong with the MakerBot. I'm like, no, because someone else just used it and it printed just fine. It's your design. Let's go back to your design. So I do suggest that you go through you as the teacher and as the student, go through the lessons that are already loaded into Tinkercad. All right, continue. All right, so there are 14 tutorials 
um, that teaches all of the basics for Tinkercad, and it is step by step. It is student paced, meaning you as a teacher, you don't have to stand up um, unless you're dealing with little ones. You don't have to stand up and actually do it with them if you're dealing with older kids. Um, you can you can pair them. They can work in groups, um, and then when they finish. They can, you can have a place for them to submit it or they can just complete it. You don't have to do all 14 tutorials for them to actually be able to um, 3D print. Um, however, if you want them to be efficient at designing, I suggest that they do all 14 tutorials. Uh, my students did complete all 14 tutorials. The activities, which I told you is new, allow you to share a design with the students to complete with notes and instructions and place it and a place to submit it for your review, so a place for you to grade it. Um, and that's the activities. And like I said, um, probably come this fall, it won't say new anymore, but on Tinkercad right now, it's got the little um, square on that says new, because um, that's what they added this year. All of these, um, there are lesson plans, there are pre-made lesson plans in Tinkercad. Please note too, Tinkercad is free, and it does have limitations. Um, some of my students, when they went to make certain designs, if it required lots of grouping, um, Tinkercad has limitations that it does not group very intricate designs. Um, anything that requires lots of intricate grouping, you would have to download to a laptop and you'd have to purchase. Um, and those um, platforms tend to be a little bit more complicated. Tinkercad is great for middle down through elementary school. Anything that becomes more complicated is better for your um, secondary or high school students. Um, but the lesson plans are, it's the uh, standards. Um, they're aligned to Common Core, and they do include the design process. So um, the curriculum that we use at our school for STEM is Project Lead the Way. Um, and so we do, we have an entire design and modeling portion of the curriculum that we use in sixth grade. And so they start off with, I have some models up here, um, of these 3D cubes that are just styrofoam. Um, so they start off with um, sketching them. I give them each a piece. They, we learn how to isometric sketch them. And then I give them all the pieces and they get so excited. They're like, oh my gosh, it's a puzzle. Like, yes, you little awesome STEM nerds. Um, it is a puzzle. So um, we learn to put it together, and then I give them the task of then going to Tinkercad. We figure out how to make a box on Tinkercad. It's also a tutorial. It's once you figure it out, you're like, oh, yay, I can work at Tinkercad. Um, and then they start to make their own puzzle pieces, and they can make their own cube like that out of the 3D printed objects. Um, I keep both of these, the foam ones and the 3D printed ones, in my classroom in case there's ever a time, um, five minutes of free time or whatever. They're like, oh, can we go do a puzzle? And they'll try and they'll time each other to see how fast they can do it, which is really fun. Um, so they also had to learn how to use the CAD software, which is Tinkercad. There's other ones out there. In my opinion, Tinkercad is the easiest to use. Um, if you get a 3D printer, it might suggest something else. Um, some of the things that it does teach you how to do on Tinkercad is how to create holes in an object or add text. Um, some of the things that we had to do for our curriculum was to create a name tag, create a birdhouse, and then they had to do a free design. Um, so one thing that she's holding up was a name tag. They do have a template on there, but I encourage you guys to try it yourself by just making the flat piece, putting the letters on there, and then grouping it together. Um, but so my kids, I have to give them very vague instructions on what they have to do to kind of give them some sort of creativity with it. But so they have to do at least those three things. They take a screenshot of it in Tinkercad, um, submit it to our platform, and then from there, as long as they submit it, then I'll go to print it. Um, like the flamingos back there, my thing is ducks. So um, each kid has a little duck. It's probably maybe that big. It's really not big at all. That way I could put, pop them out really fast. Um, but each kid got something uh, 3D printed. So whether it was a name tag, their birdhouse, um, or their free design, which is somewhere floating around. So these are some pictures of my kids. Um, and uh, so we did have a club for 3D printing 
where the kids came in and they got to learn how to do it step by step. We do have a step sheet because it's so much easier to go check it off as you're going. Um, and then once those kids figured out how to do it, I gave them, I handed over the reins and then they got to teach their friends how to use it. And so it was really cool, uh, awesome, them working together. These are some of the student testimonies that we have. Um, could we try to play the video? Maybe. Sorry. 3D printing is cool because you can see your models in 3D. Why is 3D printing cool? 3D printing is cool because we can take uh, like objects that we would typically like have to draw in STEM and like make them 3D for our projects. How can it? 3D printing is cool because you can make anything you want with your own creativity. Um, 3D printing is very cool because you can see the base times the height and see what you have to do, and you can make anything you want with creativity and put it in real life. Like it. 3D printing is very cool because you can take regular shapes and then you can 3D print it, and then you can see all the sides, and then you can take regular things, and then like you can see all the sides of the regular thing, and then yeah. Um. Like to get a little, like more of like the real world when we're doing our STEM experiences, like STEM experiments and our projects. Thank you. What are you gonna print? <laughs> so I told my kids, I was like, hey, I'm gonna present this conference. I don't know what to do. Like I need like some kid inside. They were like, we got you girl, don't even worry. And I was <laughs> like, uh, okay, what are you gonna do? So, but that's what they came up with. Um, I do try to relate everything back to the real world. Um, and so one thing, a kid mentioned about the base and the height, they, that was a part of the math standard that they were covering. And so they were like, oh my gosh, we already learned about this. Can we talk about this in here? Absolutely, what do you think that M stands for? So, there are a lot. My kids were like, here, let me help you out. <laughs> Um, so these are some tips and tricks that we thought uh, would be able to help you guys. So what if my curriculum has 3D printing section, but I don't have a 3D printer yet? Um, so paper folding, origami, YouTube is amazing. It teaches you so many things. Modeling with crafting materials and clay. Some of you guys already said that. Um, I know that whenever you do have to order through your district, your school, whatever it does, sometimes take a little bit of time. Um, so just be patient because it is so worth the wait. Um, another thing that we had to do was isometric drawings, which is basically just 3D drawings. Um, some of the kids are super into it. And normally those are the kids who don't always get the spotlight on them. So I was like, oh my gosh, you never talk. Please come here. Please show them how to do that because I struggle with six figures. Um, so what if I don't know how to use Tinkercad? Um, or my students, yeah. So start off with those tutorials, like we already said, but also your kids are brilliant. They know so much about technology. Give them free reign and let them see what they can do. Give them a free design. I had a kid make an entire aquarium with a concession stand and he had money on the outside and there was an ATM. I was like, dude, what? What aquarium have you gone to that looks this amazing? And he just made it out of nowhere. I have a kid who's obsessed with Disney and some of the tops of the towers fell off. But she made the Disney castle. It took 27 hours to print, um, <laughs> and God bless her. But it's still so cool. Let them figure it out, okay? Um, give them that little, a little bit of creativity, uh, freedom. And then how do I buy and store filament for the printers? Amazon, we love Amazon, we love our Prime. Get it there in two days. Um, there's all sorts of different colors and shapes, and temperatures are pretty important, too. Um, it should say in the manual of your printer what temperature to use it at, because I like, I am not a small person. I like everything. I like to be cold because I'm always hot. I'm always moving, and sometimes my room is too cold for my 3D Whenever my filament comes out of the 3D printer, it messes it up. So look in that uh, manual because sometimes that filament can be really tricky. Sure, I told you guys about how to store it. Um, you do want to keep it airtight even uh, during Christmas break, spring break, whatever you guys have. That two-week, one-week time span, one of my filament rolls kind of went <laughs> because I didn't wrap it up. And it was my glow-in-the-dark one, too, and that was my favorite one. So, um, but yeah. Those are some tips and tricks that we have. Here. Okay. Go back real quick. She wants to know where to get the silica from. 
Amazon. Amazon. Yeah, we buy a lot of stuff. It's a bulk. It's like it's those things that you get whenever you buy a purse or shoes or something, that little plastic thing that says, do not eat and throw away. Just those. Yeah, it's what's in baby diapers. Yeah. Oh. And what's neat, um, the piece that we passed around, this is glow-in-the-dark mm -hmm. filament. So you can get different types of filament. So that's what I'm looking for next. Um, one of my students, so my thing is frogs. Everybody in the building knows. Um, and so I had a student actually to order, which said a lot, which I'm going to share his project um, with you guys, um, to order a frog that he had found the design from someone at a festival. And the frog that he ordered um, actually was reticulated, so it had moving um, legs. And the filament, it was like multicolored. It's like almost like tie-dye. Um, so you can get filament like all types of filament, like I said, the glow in the dark, you can get um, multicolored. Um, so um, also I have two types of filament with my MakerBot. I have uh, a regular strength filament and then I have an extra strong filament depending on what you're printing and what uh, type of um, integrity or structure that you're actually making. Um, depends on what type of filament you want to use. Um, uh, yes. It'll just explode and there'll be filament little frills everywhere and it won't actually stay on the object so I have a feeling it has to do with maybe the strength of the filament or different things that maybe there's not enough integrity the way they have the letters attached I don't know is it when it's printing is doing that that's the grouping that's the grouping mm-hmm How are you storing your filament? Because temperature is everything with filament. Yeah. Yes. I would if think if that it too. gets moisture, it is very temperamental. If it gets moisture in it, um, if it gets dry, like old filament, um, it, it's just very. And then you'll have like it looks. Make sure print look hairy. Is your print hairy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that part before. But I've had lots of hairy prints. <laughs> Is your room have moisture issues? Oh, that's that's, that's, that's what my that's issue what's was. happening because my room's not very cold, but hers is. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it's temperature. I was having problems with that layering. It would do a layer, and then it would do like a little knot layer, and then it would layer again. And then it was also having the frills come off. And as you saw in the pictures, mine are not enclosed, so I couldn't have the whole dramatic blowing the door open thing. Um, but that I was having the uh, temperature control issue, and so the person in our district who we go through for all of this, he was like, Shelby, you keep your room at 65 degrees. What do you think? And I was like, oh, oops. So that could be an issue. So did you guys notice her 3D printer is open versus mine is closed? So my MakerBot replicators were open. They open printers, 3D printers print differently from closed 3D printers. Closed 3D printers, the temperature is more regulated. So my Dremel is closed, my MakerBots are closed, and I started purchasing closed 3D printers for that reason because it regulates the temperature. Now my Dremel, my Dremel print bed, the bed is what the uh, what it's printing on. Usually they're detachable and they're flexible to kind of uh, take the um, model off. My Dremel print bed, it's not heated. My MakerBot sketch print bed is heated. So my suggestion to you would be is, depending on if you don't want to adjust the temperature in your classroom, you're going to need a 3D printer that's enclosed with a heated bed. You have to read the specs on the filament when you get ready to purchase it. And it'll tell you um, like the like uses for it. Like I know it, when I ordered my MakerBot sketch, I could buy additional filament. So I, my principal, after she's, cause she approved my grant for it and they didn't purchase my extras, she purchased my extras and my extras included the filament that's extra, uh, extra strong. It's like if you're making something that you're gonna put something on top of. Are you having 
paying students pay a fee? Or are you guys giving some of the district? How are you guys funding purchasing replacement film? So we have a STEM account for our district. Um, and our district, per, um, they do once a year purchases for all the STEM um, programs across the entire district. We submit a list of what we want and hope for the best. We, not, this year we did get all of our um, requested. So um, we live in a um, very nice district. I drive an hour, you guys, for the last three years um, to work. <laughs> um, because uh, our community funds all of our stuff. So our funding is getting cut because of how our Title I money is being um, given to us. So the district knew that this was the last year for us to use Shelby County's poverty rate. So they're going to cut our Title I money drastically. And so they've already put in place additional grants from the school district. We have an education foundation. Um, We, so at the beginning of the year, we also ask, so STEM club has a fee to be in the STEM club, but also we ask our kids to bring in a $10 fee, I guess, is what they give at the beginning of the year. Also, anytime we've ever had any parent nights, I have a 3D printer running. I'm like, oh my God, you know what a 3D printer is? Oh, that's so cool. Do you want to make a donation? Thank you so much. Okay. So um, parents, I mean, they're going to help you. You're helping their kids. I don't think it'll hurt to reach out to them and ask them what they can provide to Two things. One is um, I just went to the grant writing uh, session and Walmart has grants. There are a lot of places that have educational grants. If you're a rural district, if you're doing STEM for all, girls and marginalized people, people of color, they will fund you. The second thing is if you have an open uh, 3D printer, one way to get around that, get an area heater and put it right there by it and it will keep that temperature warm around it. Just a little hint. That's a but good idea. But when the fire marshal comes, you hide that sucker <laughs> underneath that thing. <laughs> we'll just put it up. Like, what is that? Oh my gosh, <laughs> weird. For funding, I was gonna suggest the TVA grant, um, the TVA TSIN grant. It's not a very difficult process. And I have a really difficult time throwing expensive things away. So for modeling, I bought 3D printer pins, and I, you can cut that old filament off, and it those pins aren't as testy as your with your extruder. So I use my old filament um, for my 3D printer pins. That's smart. We like free money grants. Yeah. I guess is everyone's idea for how to get that free money. Oh, well, I was telling, uh, had her go back, not just for about how to store, but on the bottom, um, that is my physical science class. And so um, they had to make a 3D model. So the lesson that I did with this is a unit lesson. Um, we do across our entire school every nine weeks now, every subject, every grade has to do a PBL. Um, and so this is, uh, physical science um, class. This is our last PBL of the year, but it's a unit PBL. That means they have three deliverables, and I start with the actual problem. Um, and their um, the lesson is the atomic structure. So they make what's called a traveling museum, and we talk about empathy and how um, everybody doesn't have access to museums. Maybe they live in a rural area, and you're talking about two-hour bus drive, um, and so they have to create a traveling museum to teach others uh, about the atom. And so this was a 3D model that um, they worked in groups uh, to make. And this is their deliverable, num deliverable number two. Their number deliverable number one is a interactive timeline. This is their second one. And their third one is a how to calculate the average atomic mass um, video, like a YouTube video. Um, and then they also do like uh, feedback. So I really like this project. Um, and we do, by the way, have our emails at the end, so we do have more, not what's just inside this presentation, um, that we have for you guys today um, with pictures, examples, and a way to contact us. So keep that in mind. All right. All right, so careers, school clubs, and certifications. Um, so we do have, uh, when you think about careers, think about reaching out to, um, we also, our principal encourages um, guest speakers to come into your classroom. They realize that teachers don't know everything, so they do encourage guest speakers. Um, so one idea, we have a teacher who's teaching with us who actually worked at this particular location. It's called CAD Tech Dental Laboratories. And one of the um, 
careers they have is called a milling technician and actually have a industrial size 3D printer. Um, and you actually have to have a certification to actually operate this 3D printer. And this is actually a science teacher, um, seventh grade science teacher who worked at this particular laboratory. That was our point of contact. Um, for, as far as clubs, we have our STEM club, which is uh, pictured there. Um, this past year, they, uh, like I showed you guys, that they did 3D printing and they uh, made um, ornaments. Um, and that was how we closed out uh, before we left for uh, the winter break. Uh, we also, uh, we're in the process of having a STEM lab, like a fab lab, at our middle school. So we have one at our high school, and they're finishing building out our fab lab at the middle school. And um, one piece of equipment new this year that we got uh, is our shop bot. And so we are offering um, this coming fall a shop bot certification for um, our students. But it's gonna be through our 3D printing club, which um, myself and Shelby and one other STEM, uh, sixth grade STEM teacher um, are actually um, working with the 3D printing uh, STEM club. And so we're looking at them 3D printing, not only with the 3D printers we have in the building, which we have three types of 3D printers for them to work with, but also the shop bot, which is in our STEM lab. Um, the shop bot, it carves in wood. So the, the filament's kind of like a plastic type material. The shop bot has wood. So it's a little bit more fancy, I guess, a little bit more dangerous, you know. Yes, it is. Um, so um, I'll go back. Huh? Yeah, but with the uh, shop bot, so our, our STEM lab at the high school, they have a Glowforge, um, which is the laser you know, it has that burn. With the shop bot, not only does it carve in wood, it also carves in styrofoam. If you guys have seen those really big, um, that hard cardboard, the big cutouts that people have, like that are signs, like that big STEM lab, like it makes those. They actually use our shop bot at the high school to actually cut parts for like plays, um, like all their standing things. Also at the high school, they're used, they have a industrial size shop bot. We just have the tabletop shop bot, which by the way, is about $10,000 for the tabletop shop bot. Um, and we have an enclosure um, with it. And um, it does use a CAD um, program uh, for them to design in, which um, is a lot more complicated than um, a Tinkercad. Um, and it also um, will etch, um, like if you have um, metal badges and you wanna do like awards, you can actually make awards on the shop bot. It actually will etch inside of metal. And it also has a, a capability of cutting metal, um, which is like level three. Like it's not something you start with kids with cutting metal. But our high school actually, um, they're gonna be taking um, working with the entrepreneur class, and they're actually gonna have a store. And so they're gonna be taking custom orders, and they'll have samples where like parents can order like plaques for their like football players with their number carved in it and their name, um, being able to make awards. Also, it will um, also etch in acrylic. So if you do acrylic awards, you'll be able to actually make acrylic awards with, and it also makes bus. So it'll actually make a full 3D um, object. It will actually make a bus as well. All right, keep going. Last we, thing. We can skip that. All right. Um, I do want to hit this. This is something new. Uh, partnership with special populations in your school. And so um, this idea began um, in spring of 2022 last year. Um, I met with the functional skills teacher to identify prospective students in September of 2022. And we identified a student, I identified a student mentor um, in January because I wanted my students to have the skills. So normally with my uh, STEM 1 class, I front load skills and then we do a project with that skill that they've acquired. Um, and so um, they were actually uh, paired, a student from the functional skills class was paired with uh, students in my STEM 1 class. Um, after my students um, were certified in MakerBot, um, and that student attended class twice uh, per week. 
to actually learn how to use the 3D printer and how to use Tinkercad. And so the project that um, my students and the student uh, from the functional skill class completed was game boards. They had to make a game board, so they I front loaded the 3D printing skill. They came up with a game board. Now this game board is aligned to a core standard class. They got to choose what class they wanted to. They had to write directions. They also had to create uh, game cards. And then they had to design their game pieces. Um, let's see if I can pull some of them up. So some game pieces, um, dice, which they actually learned through the tutorials. Tutorials in uh, include things like dice, so they learned how to design those. And then they had to play the game board, so it had to be playable and then they had to give feedback. So they had a creativity score that they received from their peers as well as uh, from me, and then I scored um, the rest. All right, so uh, we know that's not working, so real quick. So how do you guys feel about implementing 3D modeling in your class for some different ways? Do you have any ideas now that maybe you did not have before? Anybody wanna share? Tinker can said, "Lady, once. do you feel a little bit more comfortable with it now?" Okay, good, good. Anybody got any ideas they want to share? Because maybe somebody else is trying to figure out some ideas. Yeah, we need to show them, have them do all fourteen tutorials to really get a good grasp on it. We only did like five or six, and then I would talk them through it. But it'd be better if they did it themselves. They're fifth grade. Yeah, but I would do it with the instructor. Okay. walking it with them, walking through it with them, but I didn't know if I just needed to turn them loose with it or not. You could always do small groups with it, because some of my kids were amazing with it, so. So you notice that the kids are working together in that picture earlier. So once all of my kids finished their operator license for the MakerBot sketch, I had a student, believe it or not, you guys, wrote an entire two-page step-by-step guide on how to take it out Tinkercad, how to get it to the laptop, and how to put it into the 3D printer. And I was, like, shocked. She kept up with all her work, and she did all this without being asked. So don't underestimate your students. And it was, like, her gift to me, and I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Um, and so um, how are you going to use 3D printing in your classroom? All right. Hi, um, I'm the director of academics for uh, our little small charter network, and we had students 3D print toys to donate to like youth villages and things like that, which was awesome. But you really kind of sparked my imagination when you talked about pairing with special population students. And we have a lot of ESL students that are you know new to the country, so thinking about ways that we can integrate that into our classes, I'm really excited about. So thank you for sharing that. So. I will say you guys gave me an idea of just how to kind of introduce uh, Tinkercad better than how I have been doing it in the past. Um, because I teach medical detectives in automation and robotics, PLTW. And one of the projects I've wanted to do is prosthetics. And so I wanted them to 3D print. So my idea, now I've kind of got my wheels turning, is to have them 3D print like an arm or a leg, replace a prosthetic on a Barbie doll. Because then they can make it smaller and then they could actually do it that way. You can so do it. I do design and modeling, and so we have to do an ankle foot orthosis. Yes. And I so love that project. And so they had to design it in Tinkercad <laughs> first, and I had to be like, okay, what's this material we're gonna use before they actually made it? So fantastic. Ooh, I'm gonna share that with our sixth grade, yes. our sixth grade teachers. Awesome, anyone else, are we good? Okay, thank you guys so much for your time, yeah. Um, our information is on here if you guys want it, our emails, our Twitter handles. Uh, feel free to reach out. We appreciate your time so much today, guys. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of Thank your conference. Thank you.